very exciting. The, the VR industry is still very early, but recently Oculus said that the number one usage of VR is video games, right? VR video games. What role do you see gaming, even as it evolves, playing in mixed reality, at least at the early stage? Yeah, it'll be fundamental. It'll be one of the pillars, no doubt. Um, the thing, though, that I would point out, though, is that it, it's experiential gaming, and it's a little different. Um, that's something I know, I mean, we can take mechanics of interaction, we can take like what we've learned about interaction, but if you think about it, you know, uh, you're now, if, in the case of VR and mixed reality, um, you have to now start to accommodate the human interface aspect, right? We know you, if, you're, if you're posturing, you're in proximity to things, um, if you're gesturing, if you're looking at things, um, you're going to be able to vocalize and express yourself towards things. Um, human interface, which is not really permeated gaming quite yet, is all that everybody is going to have to think about for the next, you know, the transformation of gaming. If, if you want to do immersive gaming, you don't have to do it. But, but another thing, though, that will happen is that, you know, games, people will want their game, some of their games to spill out into the real world. They'll want, they'll want multi-platform, and they will have to think really carefully about how people are, um, you know, experiencing the actual content itself, because those people are having a, a different kind of a feeling than you're going to have inside the safe game world behind the screen. Right? When you're inside, you absolutely have heightened emotional reactions. And um, again, um, part of the new paintbrushes, the toolkit is going to involve deep learning. And so you will, uh, as even as a game designer, will start uh, having to think about patterns of behavior of the users themselves. So learning from how people actually engage, right? So we, we do definitely need to move past old paradigms where it's just a rule, like I did this and this is what I get back. It has to be, I did this 10 times, therefore I'm, I'm exhibiting a pattern of the way that I want to engage. And now things should be customized to, to that, to me. That's, that I think is gonna keep us busy for a while thinking about. We're already seeing at the, at the infancy of eye tracking uh, uh, in VR, in traditional uh, PC, uh, what role will that play in that human interaction interface? Yeah, so um, now I, want each, I would like you to, XR would be good for you to, to utilize now because there's going to be a, VR, VR is very important, but, you know, the same you know, the same uh, sort of un underlying uh, construct that we make for VR can be propagated into other R's, MR's, right, mm -hmm. and other R's. People need to start thinking about XR in the way that they put things together, uh, because down the line, if you want an audience of millions, you need to think about this thing that I spent a lot of time and, and effort and money to make could translate, because it is real-time media, over into augmented reality via mobile, mixed reality via glasses, who knows, other forms of immersive. Um, so I think it's really important that people think that way. But, but back to your question, I, uh, firstly, um, knowing where someone is looking is, is a, um, it's kind of a sacrosanct piece of data from a privacy point of view. And the systems have to be put in place to ensure people are not ever, you know, exploited or abused. Um, their data is very valuable, it's very, it's personal. But, but there are other methods, you know, like blockchain, for example, that can, um, you know, take the the um, the ownership or management of that data out of the control of companies, 
And uh, it's different if, for, if you are a company and you're using immersive for work, that's a different matter, right? It's your intellectual property, and if it's helping in the performance, in, in training, in the pipeline that you've created in which you're using VR or mixed reality to help the flow, you know what I mean, of a particular thing you're making or what have you, that's, that's one matter, okay, so that's a company, but in the public space, uh, it's imperative that um, people have, you know, things like where, what they're looking at, anonym, anon, I can't say the word, can you say it? Uh, anonymically? Yeah, an, yeah, an, yeah. An, 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 an. pseudonym, uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> anonym, it's the word that I can never say. An anonymous. An like I, yes, we have to be anonymous, right? So there's, there's different things that could be done uh, in tech, you know, to, to make that somewhat plausible. Uh, and then there are other kinds of trust-based systems like blockchain that can ensure that we know where your data is and that you control it and that you decide if you want to release it. Now, there's other ways that you might want to, you can release your data, right? Because if you do release that kind of data in, in the right form of anonymous, you know, uh, um, you can have the mu a much, much more powerful experience, obviously you know, characters and things in the world, sort of understanding what you're interested in, right, um, makes that world really uh, um, dynamic and uh, compelling and um, really aware of you, and that's going to be very powerful for people. So once we have uh, privacy worked out correctly, um, people will want to uh, utilize that kind of that kind of data because Imagine characters that are in, the, in your world and they really are aware of you and they care. They can have a sense of what you're feeling. You may like that, you may not want that, right? You, can, you should be able to opt out, but if, if you want to opt in, uh, there's got to be ways you can do that and, and never fear for the future having, you know, you know uh, uh, released that kind of data.